The problem, obvious to viewers of this program and all of us on Earth One, as Nicole likes to call it, is that when you rally behind someone so clearly unhinged and dangerous, eventually he'll become emboldened to drop the act, to publicly spread and campaign on hate. Of course, we're talking about Donald Trump praising authoritarian leaders over the weekend, echoing Adolf Hitler and saying that immigrants are poisoning the blood of America. And we are all left with a choice to speak out against the dangers of a possible second term with the wannabe dictator for a day, ex-president, or not. To no one's surprise, much of the Republican Party has remained silent about Trump's comments, and two Republicans stand out for their particularly appalling and over-the-top performative efforts to stand by him, apparently, no matter what. During an uh, interview, the Republican Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis insisted that Trump's comments, clear as day for most of us, weren't actually about immigrants because he didn't specifically use the word immigrants. Elise Stefanik, the number four House Republican, she called for a reckoning for anti-Semitism last week, and now she's biting her tongue, refusing to respond to Politico's repeated requests for comment. She insisted, uh, she instead posted this picture yesterday from her meeting with Trump at Mar-a-Lago, calling for patriots to unite behind him. Joining our conversation is the former Deputy National Security Advisor to President Obama, Ben Rhodes. Uh, Molly's also back with us. And we just have this in. Uh, NBC caught up with uh, J.D. Vance, the, um, the senator from Ohio, who uh, says that what he was really talking, it was clear that, that what he was talking about when he said poisoning the blood of the country is objectively and obviously true to anyone who looks at the statistics. It's about fentanyl, fentanyl overdoses. Uh, it's very clear that the blood of Americans is being poisoned by a drug epidemic. I, I mean, one doesn't need to be a linguist or a scientist or anything to know that he wasn't talking about the drug epidemic. And if you were talking about the drug, drug epidemic, you could have just said that. You just throw that word in there. Well, the drug epidemic is poisoning the blood of our nation. That's not what he said. Yeah, I mean, the thing that's happening here is Trump is saying who he is out yes. loud, and yes. everybody knows that. And this isn't like a slip up here or he happened to echo Hitler over here, or he happened to echo Stalin over here. We've heard about the need to get rid of vermin. We've heard about poisoning the blood of this country. Like, there's a huge body of commentary from Donald Trump that is touching the deepest chords of fascism. Right. Which is us versus them, otherizing of people that are different, of immigrants, of people that are black and brown, of anybody that is not basically, you know, Donald Trump's idea of a real American, which right. is basically someone who supports Donald Trump. And... and, and and, and so these re Republicans contorting themselves, you know, I think by the time, tragically, we get to the election, it, they're not even be doing that anymore. I mean, th th he's going to run a campaign on this message. Right. Because that's who he is. That's what his movement is. And we have to confront that over the course of the next 11 months. There was a remarkable thing uh, that Rachel did last night in which she talked about the normalization of this. First of all, two things. One is fascists around the world, and by the way, Americans, have used this historically because, number one, it works. Yeah. And number two, if you do it enough and, and we don't talk about it, or our viewers who don't sometimes want to watch Donald Trump clips or see him on TV don't hear about it, we, we forget that this becomes normalized behavior. Mm -hmm. So what do you do, Molly? Because uh, we have to let people know. We all have people in our circles who say, Maybe they'll vote for Donald Trump. He didn't really break anything all that badly the first time around. He's telling you what he's going to do. Yeah. I mean, I think history is our greatest teacher here, right? We know what happens when someone runs as an autocrat. And look, Trump got, you know, he was able to win this non-voting, these these semi-voters by touching the fourth rail, you know, or the third rail of Republican politics, being an overt racist, you know, none of the winks and nods, just pure, unadulterated racism, which I think was sort of a, a throwback to George Wallace. And he did that, and he got his base very excited. And he knows now that he can only rely on that base and that he needs those very occasional voters to come out. And so I think his, his rhetoric is getting even more white nationalist. I mean, this is not normal stuff. For, no. I, I mean, this is not normal. They're really, in America, we haven't seen this kind of thing since the 50s. But